sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. To our God. To our God. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. It's to our God. It's to our God. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. It's to our God. God, my Savior. God, my healer. God, my deliverer. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. God, my Savior. Every word, of worship, every word of worship with one accord. One accord. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise. All of my worship, we give you glory. Lord, we bless your name. Every praise, Lord, we bless you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we glorify you. Lord, we bless your name. Every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Come on and give God a hand, praise. Come on and give God a hand, praise. God, my Savior. God, my healer. God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God, my way maker. God, my strong tower. God, my healer. God, my provider. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God, my savior. God, my savior. God, my Savior. Yes, He is. 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 God, my healer. God, my deliverer. God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. 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 God, my healer. God, my healer. God, my healer. Yes, he is. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You ought to give him the praise. He deserves all the glory and all the honor. He deserves all the worship. He deserves all the praise. You ought to bless his name. He woke you up this morning. He started you on your way, gave you all the activities of your limb. You ought to help us praise him.
Come on, somebody know that he's God, your Savior. He's your healer. Not some, but every praise. If you don't mind, turn to your neighbor and say, Neighbor, I come to praise him tonight. In the midst of this women's conference, come on, look at him and tell him, I came to praise him. Tonight, I want to lift up it, lift up my hands and oh bless the Lord. We give praises to God our Father, to Dean William. Grateful to God for him, President Payton. President Payton to the sponsors of this conference. Amen. You all give them a hand if you don't mind. Come on, we can do better. Now give them a hand. We thank you all so very much for for the work that you have done to make sure that this conference go well. This is number one. Just getting ready for number two. Amen. So we want you all to continue to pray for the success of this conference and our state convention. Amen. We're going to ask if Sister Wanda Allen would come. And uh, before Sister Wanda Allen come, we're going to ask if Sister Tiffany would come and give greetings from the Greater St. Augustine Church. Amen. She's going to give us greetings. And after which, Sister Wanda Allen will come and give us um, a welcome and what this conference is all about. Amen. Amen. In that order. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Lord, we come to give you glory. We come to give you praise on today. For everyone here who's not of our church, we Christ to praise God with us. We have it open an open mind to hear what God has to say. Is anybody come expecting something on the night? Has anybody come to just expect anything on tonight? Have you gone through something this week that only God could help you through? Well, we just hoping that tonight that God will give you the answer if you just open your heart and hear what he has to say. Amen? Amen. All right, Pastor Gaddis. To Pastor Gaddis, Bishop Payton, Dr. Thompson, any other pastors and ministers in the house? Dean Williams, what a sweetheart. Any CMBSC ministry leaders? And my brothers and sisters in Christ. I think that just about covers everybody. Good evening. My name is Wanda Allen. I am a member of the Second Baptist Church of Vallejo. It's known as the Jewel of the North Bay. My pastor was the late Dr. Fleetwood E. Irving. Amen. I just come today to say welcome. Welcome. We are so glad you took time out of your busy schedule to join us this week with our first annual women's conference. This was a vision of Bishop Payton, and we have done our best to bring it into fruition. Now, with all of that aside, we come to give God some praise. So look at your neighbor to your right, look at your neighbor to the left, and tell them if they didn't come to praise, go find them another seat. Because I've heard Dr. Thompson, 
Now, if you haven't heard her, she'll mess you up because she's on fire. So again, welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, that was just the first part of my assignment. My second part of my assignment is, what was this conference all about? We started out with Sister Woodmore. She done the Salt Covenant. We came in as individual sisters, and we're leaving out as a united sisterhood. <laughs> Amen. And then Dr. Lalee, she helped us to connect. Because as sisters, we like to tear each other down sometimes. But we, women of God, we gonna connect, because we kingdom women. And then after we done that, Dr. Joyce Sorrell, she talked to us about our theme, which is, let me, let, let me get it right, sisters. Christian women occupying until he comes, coming from Luke 19 and 13. Now what does that mean? We're going to be busy, busy, engaged in kingdom work yeah. on earth while we what? We wait for Christ's return. And how you going to wait? Expectantly. Do you expect him to return? Yeah. Amen. Amen. So we got into our panels today. What an awesome, awesome group of ladies. Amen. 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 And we started off with Dr. Rosia Robinson, and she talked about marriage, home, work. How do you do all of that and still be in ministry and do it well? Because we don't want to just do it. We want to do it well. And then we went on to Sister April Thornton, and she talked about us as women. How do we deal with our finances? What do you do when you deal with financial loss? Because I'm not going to really tell y'all this relationship I have with Amazon. <laughs> but we learn how everything I buy, I don't need. I can use some of that money in kingdom building. So we, we talked about our finances. We talked about entrepreneurship. Sometimes you just want to step out and be your own boss. And then we had our baby girl, Sister Rejoya. She talked to us about building genuine relationships. We want to be intergenerational. As me, I can speak for myself, get to be a senior woman. I want to bring in these young sisters because I can't retire from God's kingdom, but I'm going to move over to the advisory position. And I'm going to let these young sisters start doing some work in kingdom building. And then Sister Alexa, she took it home. Amen. We talked about grief. And you know, all grief is not in death. Sometimes we grieve losing a job. Sometimes, ladies, we grieve losing a man. We grieve over all kinds of things. But how do we deal with that grief? So, and then we talked about having a safe space. As we deal with that grief, we need a safe space to deal with it. Because you don't want to deal with it and then hear it all over your community. So we have, that has been the gist of what we've done this week. And we want you to come back in the morning because we're going to be dealing with our physical development. We're going to work it out. <laughs> so that's been our women's conference. We hope you've enjoyed what you've gotten so far. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And this is just our first. And Pastor Gaddis has already taught us what to say. So I'm going to share it with you. Wow. <laughs> wow. Thank you so very much, Sister Wanda Allen. I want to I want to say thank Dean William and President um, Payton for allowing it to be hosted here at the Greater St. Augustine Church. Uh, uh, we try to be warm and hope you all enjoy yourself. I want to thank, and I want to say this now before I forget it, 
Sister William and Rejoya. Thank you all so much. I mean, uh, come on, give it up. Thank you all so much. They made sure that the food was here and it was good. Amen. They had the food and it was good. And uh, some of you already suffer from high blood pressure. And Ann going to make it worse. So you all got your salt now. So we're just truly grateful. And the way that she, they put that together, we truly thank God. All of our speakers was marvelous. Amen. Amen. Where is Sister Rosie Robinson? Okay. They, they have a conference on Saturday. So she came here to take what we doing back to Mount Zion District. And you know, and that's what it's all about. Take a little here and take a little there and and you'll be surprised. So I want to thank God for her. Alexis, I know she's busy. Thank God for her. And all the speakers, we truly thank you so very much. All right. One of my nephews is going to give me some real quick. And then he's going to sit down, and then we're going to turn around, and we're going to worship in giving. So he's going to sing you happy so you can uh, know how to give, and we're going to worship in giving. And my niece is here going to sing, Ooh. and uh, before she sing. Pastor President Ryan Small is going to introduce our speaker. Amen. Come on. Yeah, how y'all doing? Y'all make a little more noise than that. How y'all doing? Look, is anybody just glad to be in church again on tonight? Will y'all give God a big hand praise all over the building? Amen. Your little son say, the Lord is blessing me right now. Y'all help me out. Oh, right now. Oh, the Lord is blessing me right now. Right now. Mm -hmm. He woke me up this morning. And he started me on my way. The Lord, he's blessing me hey. right now, right now, right now. Oh, the Lord is blessing me right now. Right now, oh, Lord is blessing me right now, oh, right now. He woke me up this morning and he started me on my way, the Lord. He blessing me right now, right now, right now. Let me say one thing. He woke me up this morning. I was close in my right mind. Oh, he didn't let, let me sleep too late. He woke me up on time he woke me up this morning and he started me oh my way the lord he blessed 
blessing me right now, right now, right now. Oh, the Lord. Is anybody glad about it? He blessing me right now. Oh, right now. Oh, the Lord is blessing me right now. Oh, right now. He woke me up this morning. And he started me on my way. The Lord, he blessing me right now, right now. Let me say that verse one more time. Oh, he woke me up this morning. Anybody glad? I was close in my right mind. Oh, he didn't let, let me sleep too late. He woke me, woke me up on time. He woke me up this morning. I'm glad that he started me on my way. Oh, the Lord, he's blessing me. Watch this. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. He's blessing me right now. Over and over, he's blessing me. Early in the morning, he's blessing me. In the noonday hour, he's blessing me. In the midnight hour, he's blessing me. Is anybody blessed? Is anybody blessed? Is anybody really blessed? Is anybody blessed? Oh, he woke me up this morning. And he started me on my way. The Lord, I know he's blessing me right now. Oh, right now. Oh, right now. Keso, give it up for him. Give it up, give it up. Keso, we truly thank God for him. Amen. He put us in the right spirit of giving. Amen. And our president has come in. And uh, we want to be a blessing to this conference. Amen. After we have given, then uh, we're going to ask if President Ryan Small would come and introduce our speaker after he had did so. Sister Felicia uh, Walton, Minister Felicia Walton, is going to give us a selection just before our speaker come tonight. Amen. I, I need you all to help us, if you will. I know some of you, like me, you have given, given, and given. Amen. And, uh, but tonight, I would like to ask you all to trust God and go a little bit further. Uh, those of you that can give $100 with me, I need you to please do so. And if you can't, I need you to do 50. Amen. Amen. Uh, when he said the Lord is blessing me, everybody was 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 up and shouting. Uh, but me and the president is going to give at least one hundred dollars, and you can give it on. You can also give on Givelify. You can give on uh, Cash App, or you can use your debit card. Uh, anybody need to use your debit card? Uh, raise your hand real high, raise your hand real high, raise your hand real high if you want to use your debit card. Okay, well, do we have both machines down here? Okay, okay, we need both machines um, so we can do this quickly. Uh, also, we want to say you can look up on ways to give. 
through our Congress on Christian Education, CMBSC, uh, Congress One. If you would like to use your debit card or your credit card, raise your hand high so they can see. Raise your hand high. We got three right here. Come on, so Stanley. We got three right here. Amen. Okay, if you're going to use uh, GiveLify, you can give on the Women's Conference. Am I right? Huh? Okay, some gave on Women's Conference tonight. You can do that. All right, let me give mine. Let me give mine. I think Pastor Payton gave his. Did he give a hundred? <laughs> Did you give a hundred, President? I just want to make sure. All right, all right. Since he gave one hundred, I'm gonna give one hundred and one. I'm gonna give one oh one. Amen. There go my one oh one. Barbara gave a hundred. Amen. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pastor Small, for giving us. All right. So he gave. Thank you, uh, Bishop Payton, for your 102. I'm going to ask the same four individual that received the offering last night if you would come. If you would come. Those of you, same four, if you would come, if you would come, if you would come, if you would come. Come quickly. All right, we're going to ask you. When the Allen's daughter is getting ready to give another hundred dollars. Thank you, sister, one little daughter. All right. Let me have a man. All right. I know the Lord. He'll make a way. Yes, he will. He will make a way for you. He will lead you safely through. I know the Lord. He'll make a way. Yes, he will. I'm going to ask everybody to stand right where you are and just bring your offering. I have a Savior I can tell my trouble to. When I'm burdened and I just don't know what to do. Pastor Kim Gaston, I go to God in secret prayer and I leave my burdens right there. I know the Lord, He'll make a way. Yes, He will. Yes, He will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Try to, man, I know he will. 
I know the Lord, he'll make a way. Yes, he will. How many of you know that for a fact? Yes, he will. Y'all help me say it. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Try him and I know he will. He'll make a way. Yes, he will. I'm going to ask if uh, Sister Tracy Hubbard would ask God blessing over the offering. Amen. God's love, his peace, his blessings to each and every one of you. I thank God for this California Missionary Baptist State Convention, your women's department. And I say congratulations to the Congress on Christian Education and uh, your president, Dr. Payton, uh, for a very successful uh, women's conference, your first one. Congratulations to you. To our president and host pastor, Dr. Gaddis, I am overjoyed. <laughs> Bless you. I am overjoyed to have been invited uh, along with the Progressive National Baptist Convention as I serve as president of our state convention, Progressive Baptist State Convention of California. And one thing that we set out to do last year, uh, the four state presidents came together and we said, we're going to come together and be collaborative in our efforts. Uh, where the progressives motto is, we are progressive and united for the work of the kingdom. And we are doing just that within these uh, four state conventions and even our national conventions have come together and we are just simply better together. I just, or wholeheartedly believe if the world were to see Christian folk together, then perhaps they would come on over. But when they see us divided, they say, why are we going to go over there when they are divided? We know how to be divided already. But if God's kingdom, if God's people would just come together, we would have so much the better place. I've uh, been asked to come and uh, introduce our speaker of the hour. I thank God also with respect uh, to Dr. Williams, the Dean of Congress here, thank you. Uh, we have one, you have one, uh, that has been on the battlefield uh, for the Lord. And some would say that she is a great uh, woman pastor, a great woman preacher and all of that. I say you draw a line straight through that. She is a great preacher of the gospel of Jesus the Christ, period. Uh, the women, I, I usually get more amens from the women's department. <laughs> Maybe I need to pick this up and you hear me better. This, this preacher, pastor, she is one of God's best heralds, one of God's best pastors, one of God's best orators of the word of God. And I have been blessed uh, since uh, we're almost the same age, but I've been blessed since I was a little boy by her preaching and by her teaching. 
uh, when I was youth minister, she was a youth pastor and she would come down to Los Angeles and do youth revivals. And so as uh, I have watched her from uh, sometimes from a distance, but also up close, I am just glad to uh, be able to call her friend. She comes from one of the greatest uh, towns in Oakland, California. from the Allen Temple Baptist Church, where most of you, if not everyone, knows the great Reverend Dr. J. Alfred Smith, Sr., uh, one of our pioneers in social justice and preaching and teaching of the gospel of Jesus the Christ. Uh, not only that, but she is uh, my second national vice president of the Progressive National Baptist Convention where we serve over two million people and uh, we are all over the United States of America and we are international as well. Uh, I just want to bring her up so you all can hear this uh, herald of God's word. Please, uh, Dr. Thompson and President Gaddis, if when you see me sneak out, uh, there is an event that I must be at. It is a progressive sponsored event and I told them I'm just going to be late because we've got kingdom building work over here. But after uh, this next election, and if uh, this is the same woman that preached before I did at the uh, Seven Last Sands, is this the same one? My God, my God, she will set the atmosphere for preaching. And the next voice that you will hear is the second Vice President of the Progressive National Baptist Convention, the pastor of the Allen Temple Baptist Church, a product of um, one of the greatest pastors as well, and her father. I miss her father, Dr. Thompson, and you all are just in for a treat. I give you, I present to you, I introduce to you the Reverend Dr. Jacqueline Thompson. God bless you. All the things that I've been through, you can feel my pain. Oh, what I had to go through to get here, you'll never understand my praise so don't try to figure it out because my worship my worship is for real mm, because my worship my worship is for real. And then, then those moments where it gets really real, you just got to cry out and say, You don't know my story of the things that I've been through. Next 
what I've been through too much. No. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. I appreciate the introduction, but all you need to know about me is I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. 
If he hasn't done anything for you, sit right there. But I felt you, Sister Felicia. If he's done anything for you, come on and stand on your feet. Put your hands together. Magnify the Lord with me. Because despite how you feel, the Lord is good. I don't know how you feel about it, but I would have fainted. Had I not believed, I would live to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And if you don't believe it, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. I promise you, he going to strengthen your heart. Come on, we put our hands together. This is the day the Lord has made. And if he woke you up, you ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, keep clapping. Help me celebrate the wonderful president of this convention and the pastor of this house. Come on. We thank God for Dr. E. Wayne Gaddis. Amen. We honor him. Keep clapping. We are so very grateful for the president of this Congress and my friend and brother. Amen. We thank God for Bishop Payton. Keep clapping. For our dean who is present with us tonight. Keep clapping. For the committee of ladies who brought all of this together. We celebrate all of you tonight. Keep clapping for the one who led us to the throne of grace. Sister Felicia, they said we honor the gift of God that she is. Some trust in horses and some trust in chariots. But I decided you might as well trust in the name of the Lord because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous can run therein and be saved. While you're standing, won't you be kind and help me praise God for my president. I thank God for President Smalls, the president of our state convention. Amen. I promise I won't be before you long. But my flight leaves in the morning. So the length of our time together is not up to me, it's up to you. So I'm trying to see who in the building on a Friday night. Amen. So let's see how long we gonna be together. Can the women shout glory? I don't know, that feel like midnight. I don't. Can the church shout hallelujah? That's what I'm talking about. I bring you greetings from the Island Temple Baptist Church and the Progressive National Baptist Convention. I certainly count it an honor and a privilege to be asked to stand for this your inaugural women's conference. Does anybody believe the best is yet to come? But aren't you glad you were on the ground floor? You'll be able to say, I was there at the very first one. So help me celebrate our visionary once again. We thank God for him. And we thank God for the support of the president in this regard. Turn with me in reflecting on your theme. And I heard you, Sister Wanda, you did my heart glad when you called the name of Reverend Dr. Fleetwood Irving. He was my first pastor. He is the reason that I got baptized because I was the little greedy girl in church who did not understand why y'all was passing me by during the communion. All I knew was everybody had a chance to eat and I wasn't eating. And he is the reason when he saw me upset in church and I said, because everybody gets to take it and I can't take it. And he says, well, you have to believe in Jesus. I said, I believe in Jesus. I'm here every night with everybody else. I believe in Jesus. And so he told the deaconess, take her on in the back and give her some crackers and grape juice. I was disappointed because I thought it was the body and the blood, as y'all see it. But aren't we grateful for the men and the women of God who lay the foundation of faith for us? So many of our generals are going on to be with the Lord, but we are grateful for the deposits that they have left in us. Our scripture text tonight is in the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 15. It is a familiar text. And it may seem unrelated on its surface, but we believe the Holy Ghost is going to bring it all together. Is that all right? Matthew chapter 15, starting at verse 21. You don't mind if we talk about a woman at a woman's conference, do you? Matthew chapter 15, starting at verse 21. I am reading from the New American Standard Version. Yours may be a little different, but we believe God gonna bring it all together. The Bible says Jesus went away from there and he withdrew into the region of Tyre and Sidon. And a Canaanite woman from that region came out and began to cry out saying, have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon possessed. 
But he did not answer her with even a word. And his disciples, because it's always some so-called disciples, came up and urged him, saying, send her away, because she keeps shouting at us. But he answered and said, I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and began to bow down before him, saying, Lord, help me. Yet he answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. And she said, yes, Lord, but please help for even dogs feed on the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, oh, woman, your faith is great. It shall be done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed at once. I know you may not understand it, just know that I like it like that. But I need you to look at somebody next to you and tell them, hold on to it. If they don't say nothing to you, they the wrong neighbor. Turn around and find somebody else, tell them, hold on to it. And if they don't say nothing, change your seat, because you're going to need your neighbor before it's over. Just find one more person and say, hold on to it. You may have your seats. Hold on to it. In preparation for our time together, I reflected on the theme that you read, Sister Wanda, entitled, Christian Women Occupying Till He Comes. And I had to admit when I reflected, Bishop, that some things are easier said than done. And so just to give you a glimpse into who I am, I am struck often by the faith of ordinary people. Not people who are famous, not people who have titles, but just regular, ordinary people. The people that Sly and the Family Stone sang about when they said everyday people. Because I descend from everyday people. And my everyday people were just ordinary, working people who just happened to believe God. No matter what happened in their life, no matter what they had to go through, they believed God. No matter what they struggled with, no what, what they encountered each and every day, they believed God. And I think, Dr. Gaddis, I struggle with it because we are living in times where we got a lot of people professing to be Christians, but they don't believe God. I just need to know who's in the building that just believes God, that believes God still has power to save and power to transform and power to heal and power to overturn and power to open doors and power to close doors and power to prepare a table for you. And is there anybody in the church on a Friday night that can just declare, I believe God? They were a people who understood the power of faith and the fact that faith has the ability to actually transform your life. They were a people who understood that we had a right to be free, so they would sing Swing Low, Sweet Chariot, Coming For to Carry Me Home. They understood that no matter what they achieved in life, it wasn't a degree, it wasn't who they knew, it wasn't the club they belonged to, so they say, we've come this far. Anybody know the song by faith, Leaning? Y'all know the rest, Trusting in His Holy Word. I've come to know that this sense of occupying and doing business until God comes is going to require another level of faith. And it's a challenge for us because we are living in times where the enemy is trying to attack our faith. Can I talk to real believers in the building? I'm a walker. I'm going to try and stay up here, but it's not going to happen. We are living in times where they are trying to make us believe that our God is not really our God and our God is not able to do what God says he can do. We are living in times where people think they can make up their own Bible and put the Constitution in it and sell it to us along with tennis shoes and we just go buy it. We're living in times where people think you have to be somebody else and act a particular way in order for God to perform. But I need a few folk that can testify. I don't need your story because I can remember what God has done for me. And I can say like my grandmother, you can't make me doubt him because I know. Is there anybody that know too much about it? We're living in times 
that are designed to undermine your faith. When we pulled in, they told me about the vandals that came and tried to bust out windows and set the church on fire. Come on, come on, come on. Trying to undermine your faith. When you look in the world, floods everywhere. War everywhere. Political division everywhere. That's the challenge in your theme text. Because faith requires you to have patience. And if we are honest about it, the hard part about faith is waiting on God. I could handle it if he would just send me an email and say, I'm going to come through right about 9.15. But God doesn't tell you how long God is going to take before God shows up and does what God promises God is going to do. That's the issue in the Luke text. The Bible says in your theme text that the king went away and called his servants and gave him resources and said, occupy, do business till I come. But he never told him how long he was going to be gone. Anybody ever prayed and had to wait on God to answer? Anybody ever believe God and still believe in God right now? You have to be careful when you find yourself in that place because the temptation is to release your faith, but tell your neighbor, hold on to it. Hold on. To it. So I said, Lord, show me somebody. That is an example to us tonight of what it looks like to hold on to it. So the Bible says that Jesus had withdrew to the district of Tyre in Sidon, present day Lebanon. And as he was going, trying to take a retreat because he had got sick of church folk. It's in the book. You can read it at your leisure. The Bible says that the Pharisees, aren't those church folk, tried to challenge him. And rather than engage, he tried to steal away and have a bit of a retreat on his own. So he withdrew to what he thought was a foreign territory where nobody was going to know who he was. But the Bible says when he got there, he met a woman. Because there's always a woman. When they say it shouldn't be a woman, it's still a woman. When they don't want it to be a woman, it's still a woman. And if you fool around long enough, God will prove, I need a few women that can get. I know y'all don't want to believe it, but God had created everything, including man, and looked at creation and said, I'm not done yet. I need a few women to celebrate that I'm the crown of creation. That it don't matter what nobody call me, who opens the door, who closes the door. As long as God knows who I am, God is able. The Bible says he left the district of Tyre and Sidon. And he found a woman. And she wasn't even a church girl. <laughs> but the Lord used her anyway. So watch how you judge other sisters. She may not look like you or dress like you or act like you or have what you have, but God is able to take what you look down on and raise it up in you. I need somebody to say, that was me. That was me. Ask me how I know he did it for me. The Bible says. That even though she didn't fit the description of someone who should have been at the first annual women's conference. She couldn't afford no t-shirt. She didn't have no registration fee. She had to borrow hours for somebody else just to get some time off to come in the middle of the day. Can I talk to real people in the church? But she knew who Jesus was. The Bible says that she came and she began to have this conversation with Jesus. Mess me up. Because it's Gentile territory. And y'all told me that Gentile folk not supposed to know nothing about Jesus. But is there anybody that can testify they learned their greatest lessons about Jesus and it wasn't in church? 
I'm not ashamed. Some of my biggest deliverances came outside these. I know a God that can speak to me in the car, that speak to me in the bank, that can deal with me in my house, that will meet me even in the hospital room. The Bible says. She had a conversation with Jesus. And she said, I need you to help me. Not for me. But I got a daughter. That's severely demon possessed. And part of the challenge we face today is we got a generation that don't know our God, that don't know our ritual, that don't know our faith, and they ain't never going to know it until we make a decision to intercede on their behalf. I need a few kingdom women that understand what it means to occupy and that sometimes I don't come to church on a Friday night for me. I came for my granddaughter. I came for my grandson. I came to snatch my family out the pit of hell. The Bible says. It's not me. It's my baby girl. Mess me up. Because I can testify, I'm not here because of me. I wish I had a few folk that could sit here and say, it's not just a song, somebody prayed. I had a grandmama that prayed and a grandfather that prayed and deacons and mothers of the church that prayed. When I wasn't thinking about serving God, they were calling my, is there anybody that can thank God for the people that thought enough of you to pray for you? She said, my baby girl. is severely demon possessed. And it is not demon possession the way we think of it like the movies, like the exorcist. The Greek word means that there was something that was causing her to go astray. The Bible says she had a conversation with Jesus. And he didn't say nothing. Mess me up, because y'all told me in vacation Bible school. After we sang, Father Abraham has many sons. Can I talk to Baptists in the building? Many sons have father. He had some daughters too, but they wasn't in the song. Many sons had father Abraham. I am one of them. So let's just, right? Yes, thank God for Baptists. The Bible says he didn't say nothing. Mess me up because you said call him up. Jesus is on the main. Call him up. And tell him, she called him. He didn't say nothing. Have you ever had to endure the silence of God? I would rather you tell me no than to tell me nothing. And I could handle the silence if it wasn't for the people around him. That's why you got to step light in the black church. Because you don't know what people struggling with. I can handle the silence of God. Now who I'm not going to endure is you. Because the Bible says the disciples, the called out ones, chosen by the hand of God, looked at a woman in a desperate situation and said, send her away. She making too much. The part that gets me, Bishop, is I didn't ask you nothing. 
So I don't know why you're concerned about what I'm doing. If I had asked you to heal me, then me making noise would understand. But I didn't come here tonight for you. I came here because I need something for God to do for me. And so if I got to run, if I got to shout, if I got to step on your foot, if I got to throw your pocketbook, I'm going to do whatever. I, I need a few folk that say, I didn't come to get your approval tonight. I came because I need God to do something in my, the Bible says. I like her because she models for us just a few things and I'm out your way. This is my post-resurrection speech. If you are going to hold on to your faith in times where it seems like everything is trying to snatch it away, the first thing you have to be willing to do is leave familiar places. Everybody's struggle is not sin. Some folk really are delivered, and they're not backsliding. But the enemy doesn't have to get you that way. He can just keep you stuck. You don't have to backslide. You can just say stuck where you are and never move. And God is calling you forward, but you still stuck. She never would have been able to get what she needed for her daughter had she stayed where she was. She had to risk leaving what she knew was familiar to go meet a man that she didn't know if he was even going to talk to her. But when you believe God enough, you don't care what nobody say. You don't care what nobody think. You don't care what nobody do. I am here to follow whatever God says. And sometimes, our churches can't move, and our conventions can't move, and our congresses can't move, and our families can't move because we're stuck. I love Dr. Fleetwood Irving, love Dr. N.T. Thompson, love all of the generals, but they served their generation in their time. And so we cannot spend our time trying to recreate historical moments because that's what felt good to us. We have to be willing to branch out and do something different. You got to be willing to leave the familiar. Call somebody who ain't got no title. Let somebody play something different. Do it in a different color. Wear burgundy even though it's white on Women's Day. I promise you heaven not going to fall if you do something She had to be willing to endure the people that said, why are you running down there? What you going down? Jesus don't even know you. He don't need you. They talk about you. You not. Listen, if any of y'all had power to deliver my daughter, I would be over here with you. But you ain't got no power. You ain't got no money for the copay at Kaiser. You ain't got nothing. So I need to leave where I am and go find somebody that is able. The Bible says. She had to leave the familiar, and there she encountered Jesus. But not only did she have to have faith to leave the familiar, but she had to have faith that knew how to endure the silence of heaven. And there is nothing that can break you like the silence of heaven. Because you begin to think, did I mess up? Is it me? Did I not give enough hundred dollars during the offering? Did, but the reality is, sometimes heaven is silent to stretch you in ways that you would never grow if heaven answered you right then. And when you are dealing with the silence of heaven, you have to also block out the naysayers of people. Because there are always going to be voices around you saying, what are you having a women's conference for? Why are y'all trying to branch out and do these new? But the only voice you have to be attuned to is the one that says, look to the hills. 
Because that's where your help going to come from. Anybody can say, all my help. I promise you the little speech almost over, post-resurrection. The Bible said, I like her. Because when the disciples started talking, she didn't even pay them. I'm sorry, what's your name again? <laughs> the Bible says she went and she bowed down in front of Jesus. And she said, son of David, have mercy on me. It messed me up because that means this Gentile woman understood the power of worship. And sometimes when you have prayed and heaven is silent, it's time for you to change your posture. And whatever your prayer has not done, I promise you, your worship can break it. Sometimes God is just trying to see, will you praise me through it? Before I deliver you from it, can you praise me while you in it? Is there anybody that can say, I got a diagnosis, but God, I still thank you that my kids are still acting crazy, but God, I'm going to praise you anyhow. That life is not perfect, but the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Is there anybody that can say, if you never do anything else for me, you've already done enough. The Bible says. She assumed the position that gets the attention of God. And there is a position that can get the attention of God. When my mother, why mothers, raise your hand if you're a mother. Godmother, birth mother. Okay, so you know how it is. When no matter where you are, right? And you have something to do, so you say, hold my baby. I'll be right back. You might be in the choir. You might be in church. You leave them somewhere. And, you know, you look at him, give him the look. Because that was my mother. If I had to lead his daughter, come over here. But there is something about when your baby cries. It don't matter how many other kids or babies are in the place. When your baby cries, you know the sound of your child. Don't you know when you worship God in the midst of your situation that it goes up to the ears of God like a crying baby and God is not able to stay in heaven? He has to say, let me come down in the middle of it and see what's going on with my, I need somebody to open their mouth right now, put your hands together and cry out to the God of your salvation even in the middle of it. The Bible says she bowed down. I need you to help me. And Jesus said, I wasn't sent to your kind. I was only sent to the house of Israel. Now I have to admit, that's why I wasn't born in biblical times. <laughs> Had he left it there, we'd have been fine. But then he said, I can't, I cannot take bread that belongs to the children and give it to dogs. This is where the parable would have changed. Because I want to know Jesus. I didn't come disrespectfully. I came because I know your power. I've heard about you. Your reputation precedes you. But who are you calling a dog? But I like her. Because even through what appeared to be disrespect, she stood there. And it made me think about our ancestors. Where would we be 
if they had given up when they were spat on and the dogs attacked them? Where would they be if they went home after the police beat them up for protest? We would not be free today if we didn't have people that knew how to endure. She stayed right there and gave a word of her own. She said, that's true. She said, but even dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Mess me up. Because she's saying, keep your loaf of bread. I don't need your bread. I got enough faith I've been holding on to that if you let a crumb of that wonder bread fall on the floor, I'm going to take it and get everything I need. For. I need a few folk that can say, all I need is a crumb in order to hold on to what God has promised me. I don't need the whole loaf. The Bible says. That by the time she finished talking, she went from being a dog to being a daughter. I need a few daughters in the house to say, God, whatever you got to take me through, I'm a whole on. Whatever I got to endure, I'm a whole on. Whatever the enemy tries, I'm going to hold on. Even with tears in my eyes, I'm going to hold on. Why? Because she had a faith to believe. that it can be better than what it is right now. And ain't that what it mean to be Baptist? Ain't that how the enemy messed up with us? Because he had folk thinking that Good Friday was all there is. He had people thinking the crucifixion was all there is. But y'all told me early. That's what y'all said to me, it was early. On a Sunday morning, where God raised Jesus up with all power in his hand and gave him a name that is above every other name that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess is there anybody that knows the enemy can't snatch what you decide to hold on to the Bible says he said what you wanted is already done. And then Mark said when she got home, her baby girl was sitting up clothed and in her right mind, fully delivered. Don't you know you can be here tonight and God can do a work at your house? He can do a work in your family? He can do a work on your job? But it's all dependent on what you. You got to decide. I'm going to hold on. Thank you, Harriet Tubman. For holding on. Not just freeing yourself, but going back. Thank you, Rosa Parks. When you had a car, that's what you don't know. Rosa had a whole vehicle. But she held on so that people she would never meet. Thank you, Martin King, for giving your life that we might one day be free. Thank you. to the countless Baptist church women who made cakes and baked pies and fried chicken and sold fish dinners to pay church mortgages, to have scholarships so kids like me could graduate. We may never know their names, but I promise you, where we stand tonight, it is because of the sacrifices that nameless, kingdom-minded women who were determined not to give up, but they held on to their faith. 
when they were denied access, they taught Sunday school. When people told them God didn't call women, they called themselves evangelists and taught from the floor. And we all can think of one. But if we are going to minister to a generation that is coming, we have to decide to be that one. You will never know how the penny drives, how the fashion show. How all of those things, it's the women's departments that built conventions. Nanny Helen Burroughs. And I know all of them, when the conventions run out of money, they borrow money from the women. And we are required to be faithful yeah. with or without affirmation. Because if they don't ever print my name, as long as it's written in the Lamb's Book of Life, then I have all the reward I need. But Sister Wanda, here's, here's the challenge, and I'm done. I'm done. Occupying gets tiring. Can I just tell the truth? I'm a black girl that grew up in church when church wasn't a choice. I don't mean no harm. As for you and your house, you do whatever you want to. But my mother said, as for me and mine. She didn't say we gonna discuss it. <laughs> she said we will serve the Lord. So I went to choir rehearsal, I went to BTU, I went to whatever she went to, I went to junior mother's meeting, business meeting, Usher's your day. <laughs> Every prayer breakfast known to man. I was that little girl. Do the welcome. What? Get up there and I welcome you once. I welcome you twice. I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> because that's how we were trained. Right. Right. To serve God meant to serve the church. That's what it... But can we, can I be real honest? We get tired. Because doing business is tiring. And it's always 20% of the people that do 80% of the work. And we are in a particular time where I think the enemy is trying to attack the faithful. In this post-pandemic era, where church has now become a convenience and we go if we feel like it. And then we try and justify it. But what if God decided, I don't feel like providing air today. I got to deal with Gaza. I don't feel like causing the sun to shine. I'm tired. I'm sustaining the world by my will. I don't feel like. So all I want to do, is, and I'm done. Our hands get slippery because faith is not the only thing we're trying to hold. We're trying to hold families. We're trying to hold ministries. I'm trying to hold my faith, but I'm also trying to hold my mind and hold my health and hold my spirit. So I came tonight because I was invited, but my assignment was not to say yes to the invitation. It was to encourage some people who are weary and to impart strength for the journey. 
So if you are here tonight and you're honest enough to say, I am human and I get tired, I just want you to stand. That's it. All we're going to do is pray and I'm done. I'm not telling your business. I'm not saying where you were last night. <laughs> and I know some of you are so tired you can't even stand. Because you, be, I see your hand. <laughs> I see your hand. And we give deference to our seasoned saints because we all going to get there one day. We give deference to those who are challenged in our bodies because we all going to get there one day. And if you don't mind in this post-pandemic environment, can you just touch your sister's hand? I promise she was hand sanitizer somewhere. And we gonna use it. If you don't connect fully, just touch, just touch somebody. Men get tired too, so a shoulder, a hand. Because here's the point. Can you feel that hand? It's how you know God is faithful. Because if you can feel that hand, it's because you're still here. And what the enemy tried to take you out with didn't work. So come on, squeeze that hand so they can know that they feel yours as well. And that the same power that's sustaining you is sustaining them. And so God, we pause in this moment in your sanctuary where you told us if we gathered in this place and called on your name that you would hear us. We pause right now in the name of Jesus to bless you. Before we ask you for anything, we thank you for everything. We call your name holy. We call you righteous. We declare that you are good, that you're better than good, that you are a way maker and a miracle worker. You are a heart fixer and a mind regulator. And we thank you for being God. And as our grandmothers would say, God, all by yourself. God, we don't stand here tonight claiming to be perfect. We recognize we've done some things and said some things and behaved in some ways that are not pleasing in your sight. Oh, but the blood still works. So we pray plead the blood of Jesus right now and we confess before you Lord because you said if we tell on ourselves you were faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. God I don't pray for me. I pray for this hand I'm holding right now. I don't know their situation. I don't know their struggle but Lord you know and so as I squeeze their hand give them power as I squeeze their hand increase their faith. As I squeeze their hand give them strength. As I squeeze their hand restore their joy as I squeeze their hand, replenish their hope. God, you are a God that can do anything but fail. Your word said that if we wait on you, God, that you would give us strength. We could run and not be weary. We could walk and not faint. Won't you increase their patience? God, as I squeeze their hand, give them patience to know that you will never leave them nor forsake them. Let them know you haven't forgotten about them, that their name is written in the palm of your hand. And in the fullness of time, God, if they faint not, they shall reap the harvest that they planted. God, I thank you that they came tonight. I thank you because they're a testimony and a witness to your goodness. I thank you. That even when the enemy tried to make them let go, they still holding on. I thank you. And God, if they're weak tonight, I'm going to hold their hand a little tighter and let them know that if the enemy comes for them, he's going to have to come through me. I thank you, oh God, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. I thank you, oh God, that the prayers are already answered and the healing has already come and the deliverance is already right. God, just help us not to turn you loose. And we thank you that even when we feel like letting go, that you got such a hold on us, that even when we want to walk away, you show up right where we are. God, I'm confessing your word tonight. You said the joy of the Lord is what's going to give us some strength. So God, help us not to focus on what we don't have, but help us focus on who you are and how good you've been, and how kind you've been, and how faithful you've been. God, restore joy right now in the name of Jesus, that we might run on and see what the end is going to be. We thank you, God, because we believe the best is yet to come. We dare not pray and not pray for our leadership, oh God. We thank you for their vision and for their courage and for their willingness to step out and do something different. Touch them right now in the name of Jesus. God, provide in excess every need 
Make sure every cost is covered in excess, oh God. We believe that you are able to do it. And because we are people of faith, we don't wait till the battle is over. We don't need no proof. We don't need no documentation. God, as I release my neighbor's hand, I bless you right now. And I thank you right now. And I praise you right now. And I glorify you right now. And I magnify you right now. For you alone are worthy. In Jesus' name. And those that believe said amen and amen. Now come on, hug somebody. Say, hold on, hold on. Come on, encourage them. Say, hold on. Come on, encourage them. Say, don't let go. You're not confined to that row. You can leave your row and go across and tell somebody, hold on. Whatever you do. Hold on to it. Come on, she might need your hug. Hug her, tell her, hold on. You may feel like letting go, but hold on. Come on, tell her, you're not in it by yourself. That if you need somebody, you got me. Hold on to it. Hey. Hallelujah. That's it, encourager. Say, hold on to it. In Jesus' name. That's it, encourager. It's all right. Tell her, you don't have to know what it is. I promise you, while the Spirit is ministering, if you bless God, God will do something for you while he's working it out for them. So, God, we thank you. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh right now. In the name of Jesus, have your way in the lives of our sisters, our aunts, our mothers, our grandmothers. Use them for your glory, oh God. Our bodies may be weary, but our spirits are willing right now in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you because you said weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. We thank you for teaching us about grief, oh God. We thank you for teaching us that our tears are good and it's a form of release. We thank you that you loved us enough to come and see about us in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the... Come on and help me sing it tonight. In the name, in the name. Come on and help me tonight. You sound good. Oh, who can for us when we? Jesus, that's it. Precious. Come on and clap your hands. We have. We got five minutes to stand on our feet and clap our hands and say, in the name we have, in the name, in the name, Satan, oh, When we, Jesus, precious, we have, come on if you believe it, clap your hands and say, Come on, give the Lord a great big, come on.
just a day ago, even hours ago, a tornado came through Slidell, Louisiana. Certain parts of Texas. And don't you know, the news report is that no one was injured. I'm here to tell us today as a good news reporter that an earthquake came in this place tonight. And the good news is no one was hurt. But just like the tornado that came through Slidell when no one was injured, they discovered some things. They discovered that some of the housing that they lived in was not as strong as they thought it was. I want anybody to hear me tonight. You may not be hurt, but is there anybody here who can testify my house may not have been as strong as I thought it was? There's some fragile parts in this old house I'm living in. And this is the invitation period. Uh, this is a women's conference, and I trust that it was founded on the fact that believers were coming together to be strengthened. Christian women were coming together to be made better. And not so much an evangelism to reach those that are lost. And um, this is a good place for lost folk to be as well. But if you're here tonight, and you know that you are saved, but you discover tonight that there's some fragile places in my life. I know somebody won't admit it right now, uh, but I know that there are at least two or three of us uh, that know the wind will shake us, we fall apart. Amen? So the invitation is, to see who has received the word from the Lord tonight. Anybody want to build on a solid foundation? Anybody know that you can build and God will let you even move in the house? According to scripture, the one built on the solid ground and one built on the shaky ground, he, both of them moved in. Both of them had flat screen TVs on the wall and both of them had a, a nice furniture in the house, but when the wind blew, great was the fall of it. Well, I'm trusting that you receive the word. If you receive the word and I give God a great big hand clap of praise. Amen. Now, I'm anxious to go home because unlike some of you who can drive around a corner, I got about an hour and a half to drive to get home. Amen. So I'm going to share my brief remarks at this moment. I, first of all, I want to applaud the Bishop Payton. No matter how it may have looked or what others may have thought, this was the brainchild of Bishop Payton. It was... Less than a year ago, he challenged me, called me, and told me what he wanted to do. And he sort of pushed me, make it happen, amen. And I began, I began meeting with a few women, I think about six, or around six women, five or six, eight, somebody says eight people, eight women. And it was not to exclude anyone. But I knew initially we did not need 200 women at the table. Too many attitudes. Too many opinions. Too many, we used to do it this way. We pulled out just a handful of women and we met with them. 
We laid out before them what the bishop had in mind for us. Y'all don't mind me calling him bishop, do you? Amen. And, um, and, I, and I told them, now I want, to, I want to liberate you to go get it done. And I'm going to tell you one thing I did. And I'm taking my seat. I learned something In my years of parenting, I learned that a child does not learn to walk until you take your hands off of them. A child does not learn how to ride a bicycle until you take your hands off of them. Even Children get to a certain age, you take them to kindergarten or preschool, you got to take your hands off of them. Because if you never take your hands off that child, that child may never walk. May never learn to ride a bicycle. So what I did after the women got going, I, I took my hands off of it. I'm, I want to help somebody, amen. Amen. And, and we got to learn sometimes we got to take our hands off of some things. Sometimes we want to put our hands on everything. But if we really wanted to grow up and to mature the way it ought to be, we got to learn how to lead and pull our hands off of some things. So I want to applaud the women. I want to call the names out as in a program. Amen. I'm going to call them in alphabetical order. Amen. Amen. I want to wonder Allen. Come on, give it a four. <laughs> Diane Buffington. Karen Graham. Dr. Joyce Harrell. Lady Stacy Hubbard. I hope I'm still in alphabetical order, amen. Amen. Robin Lambert. <laughs> Kayla Lyons. <laughs> Jasmine Terry. I think I missed one out of order. Alexis Owens. Then Jasmine Terry. And then we look at Rejoya Williams. That's my favorite one right there, hey amen. Didn't my baby speak good today? Hey, that's my baby, hey amen. And then uh, Toya Williams. And then... Uh, not lady, but my lady, Dr. Valanda Williams, amen. And Ann Woodmore, I mean, I want to applaud each of y'all. You did an outstanding job. Let's give it up for our dean, Dr. E.M. Williams. It's another day's journey, and I'm glad about it. For well, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Let's give it up one more time for the Word of God. And let's give it up to the preacher tonight, Pastor Jackie Thompson. You, you didn't know her, but you know her now. Amen. Amen. All of the North just stand up. I got to give credit to where I'm at. All of the North just stand up that's here. The North. Man, amen, amen. They traveled and came afar, got a hotel room, and some flew and some drove. I just thank God for the North being here in the South. Let me, let me say this. Again, about a year ago, I did, I talked to Dr. Williams and and I said, Dr. Williams, we, we, we need to have a women's conference. And uh, Dr. Williams, 
I said, one, I want to meet with our leaders. And he did that as he stated to you. He wanted to share with you all that it's just time for us to come together. Yeah. And the women make up a powerful vehicle in our state convention and in our Congress. And it's just awesome to see women together. I, I learned a lot this afternoon uh, when I listened to the presenters and I listened to the people of God. And I shared with Sister Ann Woodmore, there are a lot of people that are sitting in our pews every Sunday hurting. But let's just keep it real. See, we, we can't help other folk until we first help ourselves. We use this cliche, hurt people, hurt people. But until we heal, we can't help the hurt people out there. And, and Pastor Jackie just brought it plain tonight. Most of us in here need God. If we're going to get better, we got to first seek first God. I'm, I'm talking about individual. I ain't, I ain't talking about nobody. But let me, let me help you again. Preachers are hurting. Your pastor is hurting. Watch this. Silently. We're preaching to hurt people and we're hurt. It shook me up. As Pastor Jackie would say, it, it, it blew my mind. Because what you all were talking, you were talking to me. I've been grieving my mother since 2019, yet trying to encourage folk who are hurting. And I'm hurting myself. And I used to share with people, and I ministered to them, I said, grieve long. And somebody said today, one of the presenters said, uh, grieve long. Can I help you when I'm hurting? When I'm constantly seeking God myself. My father died in 15 and then right around that corner my mother died. And watch this. I was a caregiver as well as pastor greater St. John. And it looked like Dr. Gaddis folk in the pews didn't really understand what I was going through. But they was expecting something from me. And if I did not show up, if I did not do my job, then they looked down on me. But I'm like Jackie tonight. If the Lord just give me a crumb. He don't have to do it all, but if he just give me, I wish I had some folk that said, God, just give me a crumb tonight. If God just give me a crumb, I, I'll keep on serving it. I know this is different, and I ain't worried about, Dr. Gaddis, what folks say about us tonight on tonight. I have been blessed tonight by the people of God. Let me help you. We can encourage one another. I wish I had some. We can encourage one another. But watch this. You can't encourage me if you're not at the table. If all we want to do is just criticize and ostracize and throw folk out the church, and that's all God called us to do, I thought we were supposed to be seeking folk who are lost and bringing them to Jesus. This is a movement. We might not have the numbers this year, but next year I'm expecting to double this. But we do this in faith. Pastor Thompson challenged us, Dr. Gaddis, that we've got to change and we got to do things differently. Why keep doing the same thing and all we get is the same folk and the same numbers? Maybe we need to change. I didn't get up to say all that. I said I wasn't going to say much because this is a women's conference and the women kind of offended me in the beginning because they said they didn't need us. And 
I got into my feelings. Like y'all know we do, and anybody got a man know he gets into his feelings. And the Lord spoke to me and said, it's much bigger than you. This movement, California Missionary Baptist State Convention, this is much bigger than us. Watch this. Okay. All right. This is the greater St. Augustine, Mike. I understand. I thought I was at St. John. Watch this, and I quit. I'm through. I'm through. Those that are 30 and under, stand up. If you're 30 and under, stand up. Watch this. California State Convention. I want to salute you all for sticking with us. We, we, we have to encourage them to be a part of us. And, and, and we need to get back to our job of discipling folk who are behind us. That watch this, that they are encouraged to join us. But if we just keep looking at the same folk, I'm getting gray. You can't see it, but it's coming. And I need somebody, Dr. Gaddis, to follow me and to take my place. Y'all hear me? I've been saying this for a long time. I don't want to come to the convention and see the same folk every year. I want to see some of them. I want to see our daughters and our nieces and our grandchildren and our granddaughters. Come on, mission. That ought to be our strategy. And then watch this. If we tell them and they don't come, you ought to go get some and bring them. Come on, somebody. Go outside of the box and find some strategy that we can bring some young folk to be a part of us. And then watch this and be inclusive and let them be a part of the conference movement. Let them sit at the table and give us our ideas on how we can bring others here. Maybe they ain't interested in the way we do things. And that's okay. But times have changed. You don't wear fishnets no more. And they don't either. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> Why? You changed. And they've changed. They dress differently. But instead of us criticizing them, watch this. Give them a word. Encourage them. That's all I'm saying. I didn't want to preach after that, but I just, I'm proud of you all, staff, all of you. Thank you for, the, for just putting up with us. Putting up with us men leaders in this convention. Thank, thank you for putting up with us because she's right. We did have to borrow from y'all to have a successful convention. We looked for y'all to raise the money. I know I do at St. John. I look for the women. If I'm having a, a fundraiser, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for all my women leaders. Because you know why? You're able to draw and make money. You're able to collect money. Some of my men and deacons, they lazy. But I give it to a sister, and she got some, and oh, man, she's with, they like Ann Winmore. Her word is Jesus, 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 Jesus. But that ought to be all of our word. Because when I get in trouble, that's who I call. I don't call my deacon board. I don't even call Dr. Gaddis. And he's my friend. He's my brother. We don't, you know why we like each other? Because we can fight. And talk about each other and watch it at the end of the day still love each other. And then we'll go to M&M's and get some gumbo or some something. Because that's all the places I've been coming to Los Angeles. I don't think he knows another restaurant in this area. But M&M's. We don't go to Fleming's. We don't go to Ruth Chris. But I go to M&M's. And I get full. But every now and then, Sister Gaddis, I, I ask him to take me to Flemings. I like Flemings. Crustaceans. But I won't give it up now for our president who has hosted us well today. Dr. E. Wayne Gaddis. Come on, let's give it up. 
Wasn't he a good host? Wasn't Greater St. Augustine a great host this few days? Let me say this as I give him the mic, or he got his own. I have to fly out. I am the speaker for the Mount Zion Women's Conference in the morning. And so I have to be in Oakland to preach in the morning. So I'll be leaving shortly. But it's not that I'm not for y'all for the clothes. It's just that I have to go back and have to preach again. And is Rosalia here? She, she left already because they're hosting that. And that is their conference. And so they've asked me to be the preacher. So again, thank you, Pastor Thompson. You just made me proud. She know how to do it. She's educated. She got suave. And she pastored one of the largest successful churches in Oakland, California. With great history. You made me proud. I am proud of you. We were not trying to use you to draw nobody. I knew that you would give these women a word of encouragement. That's why you're here. Because I knew you would bless us. Thank you so much, my friend. Y'all give it up for our Congress President. Give it up for our Congress President, Bishop Gregory Payton. Amen, my friend and my brother. And we truly thank God for him. And we thank God for all of you who have come far and uh, near. I want to thank the steam. Thank you so very much. Uh, you know, Bishop Payton want to have his folks up north to stand. You know, I, I mean, you know, he forgot I get the mics last. <laughs> come on, Steen, just stand up. Those of you that are here, come on, Steen. Come on, those of you that are here, just stand up. Look at, look at you, look at you, look at you. Thank you all so very much. Thank you so very much. We love you. Thank you so much, uh, Melanie. Thank you so very much. Uh, Gaddis Jr., thank you so very much, and to all the security and those who have watched the cause and protected us while we are in here. Thank you so, so very much. Um, some of you might say, well, the house is not full tonight. Let me just be honest with you and let us uh, just face reality. I like the way Sister Jacket, can I keep it real? <laughs> Old people don't come out at night like they used to. Come on now. They don't come out like they used to. And I want to say, this is why we are having a lunch hour special. Uh, the 28th, 29th, and the 30th of May. From 11 o'clock to 1.15, uh, we are going to have Dr. F.D. Sampson yeah. to be our speaker. And this is catered to our elderly who don't come out at night, and even if you all come out at night, but we invite you all to come and be with us right here from 11 o'clock to 1.15. This is our lunch hour special, very first time we're having it, and we're expecting the house to be full, amen? Also, we want to say next, uh, next Friday night, we're going to be in Oakland. I'm going to be in my new tot center that uh, I have in Oakland. Oh, I mean, <laughs> uh, we're going to be at the Greater St. John Baptist Church. Uh, Bishop Payton and the Greater St. John is hosting us. I want to say to you all, we're getting ready to host the 144th annual session of the National Missionary Baptist Convention of America. And all of you, all our state convention is the host. And when I say state convention, that means everybody is the host. And we are doing rallies to taking it to different cities from now up until June. We're going to be in Oakland next Friday night. Then we on 31st, we're going to be here at the New Providence Church. On uh, June 6th, we're going to be at the... Calvary Baptist Church in San Diego. And we want to thank all these moderators for supporting us and encouraging us and making sure that we can have these rallies. Amen. I also want to say that we are praying for all pastors, all churches with our pastors, 
that God will stay in the mix. And can I say something to you? And it, and I, I wasn't going to say it, but uh, in talking about it, it really bothered me um, the last two months, three months, two months. We've been going to North Oakland. We've been going to North Oakland. A lot of you don't even know. Uh, when I'm up there, I leave early and come back late at night. But it really bothers me, and I was more troubled this time than I have been, Sister Jackie. To talk with someone who say they have been under a pastor for 30 and almost 40 years. And then to say the last 10 years, they have not receive nothing from him. That's a sad indictment. And watch this. And then Bishop Payton turn around and ask, why are you still here? The Lord ain't told me to leave. And she's dangerous for the next pastor and the new members that come to that church. So I'm asking you all to pray for North Oakland Baptist Church. And one reason I want you all to pray for North Oakland Baptist Church is simply because North Oakland is our mother church. Our state convention was born out of North Oakland. Dr. G.C. Coleman was the organizer of the California Missionary Baptist State Convention 102 years ago. And a lot of people want to know, why do you rush up to North Oakland and you try any child that love their mother would do whatever it takes to make sure that their mother is safe. And North Oakland is the state convention's mother. They gave birth to us. And I want to say this. It hurts to see that people see the weakness of North Oakland right now, but don't see their future strength. So I'm asking you all to please pray for them and pray for the Foothill Baptist Church. I pray for the Second Baptist Church, that God will bless these churches, keep them together, and keep the devil out of it. Amen? Amen. And I say this to you now. Right now, we all are doing pretty good. But we don't know what's going to happen to Gaddis and Peyton next week. And we hope that you all do not go through the same thing that these other churches are going through. Amen. I'm through. I'm through. I'm going to sit down. Pastor Kim Gaston, stand up. Just let us recognize you. Pastor Gaston is a son of Dr. J. Arthur Smith. Amen. So I want you to meet Miss Jackie Thompson. And Miss Jackie, meet Pastor Gaston. Amen. So God bless you. I want to say to the committee, I love you and I appreciate you. And I don't know who to turn the mic over to until in the morning. <laughs> Dr. Thompson, they say, turn it over to you. See, we need ladies. We need women. And, and telling us what to do. <laughs> and telling us what to do. A amen. Just, just keep telling us. Anybody else want to tell us what to do? Amen. Let's, let, me get a, let me get a mic. Uh, can we get somebody to do a mic, clean a mic for Sister Thompson, please? Oh, you have your mic. Now, we don't, I'm, I know if somebody looked at me funny when I say, where's my mic? I don't want everybody breathing in my mic. Hey, uh, uh, Ann, come on, Kenny. I mean, come on. It ain't, it ain't talking, huh?
Okay, give a, let that one talk. Thank you. And we continue to pray God's blessings on that. It is an honor and a privilege to meet you. So glad to be able to do that. We will talk soon. All hearts and minds are clear. Let us receive our benediction. Bless you. Bless you. And I promise you they're going to listen before it's over. They would have known Jesus was risen had they listened. But that's next year. Gracious God, how awesome you are. We just thank you for being so good and so kind for reminding us that you are ever present with us and that your name is Emmanuel. As we prepare our hearts to depart from this place, we never leave your presence. God, but we do ask for safe travel because we recognize where we are. We recognize that there are accidents and bullets and all kinds of things. God, but we bind the hand of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. God, we ask that you keep us through the night. Give us a peaceful sleep, Lord. And if it be your plan, allow us to gather tomorrow for the conclusion of the matter. For those that are traveling, we ask for traveling mercies. God, and we thank you that you allowed us to be a part of the seed that was sown tonight. We know that some plant, some water, but in the end, you're going to get the increase. And so we thank you for it. God, we ask your blessing on this particular house that thought it not robbery to open their doors to host us tonight. Won't you continue to be a blessing, continue to use both our presidents of the Congress as well as the convention and even our dean, oh God, for the strengthening of this hour. You told us that the harvest is plentiful, but that the laborers would be few. But God, we're asking that you use us, send us out into the harvest. And we promise that we will give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his throne of grace. Be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. And the people of God said, amen. amen.